we come together with open hands, open hearts and open minds to worship God. God of song and story. We give thanks today for the gift of the gospel, the story of Jesus on earth. Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Open our eyes to see the wonderful truths in your stories. Give us understanding that we may keep your words in our minds, put them into practice with our hands and fill our hearts with your love. Amen. So here we are in the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel according to Mark has no story of Jesus' birth. No donkey, no angels, no nativity, no nothing. It jumps right in with Jesus' adult life. Starting with the words, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We hear about John the Baptist, who ate locusts and predicted the coming of a man way more powerful than himself. And then, as if by magic, Jesus appears. John baptises Jesus with water, and then the Holy Spirit appears and the voice of God says, You are my son, the beloved. Then Jesus goes to the wilderness, where he's tested for 40 days, and he emerges triumphant. Jesus travels to Galilee, gathers his first disciples to him, Simon and Andrew, two Jewish brothers who are fishermen, and Jesus asks them to follow him, saying he'll show them how to fish for people rather than for fish. Simon and Andrew, as well as James and John, drop their nets and follow Jesus. Then Jesus cleanses a leper, heals a paralytic, and heals Simon's sick mother-in-law, Oh, and a man with a withered hand. And all these miracles cause a crowd that gathers to watch Jesus. They become bewildered and sometimes fearful. Jesus eats with sinners and with tax collectors. And the Pharisees get really grumpy. Because every time they challenge Jesus, he has an answer. But things are getting a little, well, heated. And then Jesus starts telling some parables. He tells one about a lamp on a stand, and another about a sower. And he tells today's two very short parables, talking about tiny seeds. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows though he doesn't know why or how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed which is the smallest of all seeds on earth, yet when planted it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Some parables are really long and some are, well, short. If the parable of the prodigal son at 21 verses long is practically war and peace, today's stories are, well, four verses each. But... Like the seeds the parables are talking about, these little stories can sprout and ripen our understanding of the kingdom. The first one is either really mysterious or really, well, basic, depending on how you read it. It's like a person who tosses seed out onto some earth and then walks off. They sleep, eat, do the crossword, and magically, despite doing nothing, the seeds grow all by themselves. And in the Greek, the word all by itself is the word automate, from which we get our word automatic. Automatically, mysteriously, without any apparent outside assistance, the seeds just grow. And suddenly the day arrives when you've got a whole field of wheat ready to be harvested. Well, that's how seeds work, isn't it? 
everywhere but on our kitchen windowsill anyway. What's the thing here? Is it the power of the seeds? The inactivity of the farmer? The mystery of how seeds do what they do? What's the point here? Are we meant to be inactive, lazy, not really do anything about the growth of God's kingdom one way or the other? That's not going to make a good sermon, but it might be the beginning of a great fairy story. Today's parables, both the one about the seed that is sown miraculously growing and the other one about the tiny seed growing really big, they're basically Jack and the Beanstalk. They are sadly lacking a magic cow and a goose that lays golden eggs. Jack comes home with some magic beans and his mother has a grump because those tiny beans are not worth a cow. They can never live off those. So in anger, she hurls them out the window. Those beans were a non-starter, a mistake, a dead end nutritionally and in every other sense, except that, of course, without her doing anything at all, they ended up sprouting and growing. And not just into any old plant, but those tiny seeds sprouted into a giant mustard beanstalk that went, in a way, clear up to heaven. We sow tiny seeds of kingdom, and then we forget about them. The day will come when the result of the kingdom's silent, steady growth will be impressive, beanstalk impressive, and without us having to do anything about it. But, meanwhile, don't be surprised if the seeds you plant look a little, well, weak and puny. Don't surprised if when you try to tell people how awesome God is, it just doesn't come out powerful enough. You only have to flick through a paper or watch the news to start a list of threats to our existence. COVID, climate change, nuclear bombs, terrorism, hunger, poverty, hatred. And here we stand with a tiny little mustard seed message. God is love. Jesus saves. Jewish carpenter's son from halfway around the world and from over 2,000 years ago, that's what you need. It doesn't quite seem enough, but it is. It's a tiny seed. We don't need to know how the seed will grow or even do anything once it's planted. Even though we don't understand how kingdom seeds grow, they do, whether we're watching or not, whether we're tending every moment or not. They grow silently and mysteriously in people's hearts. The seeds don't look like much to begin with, and they grow without making much noise. And then a beanstalk appears. But there's no fi fi fo fum echoing through the branches. There's a quiet voice whispering, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God of song and story. We give thanks for the stories of Jesus, told by people for so many years. We give thanks for this life of faith. Even though sometimes we have our doubts, we give thanks for the gift of the Spirit, continually calling us to Christian life together. We who are made in your image, give thanks that your stories in the Bible are relevant for us today, and that we hear them fresh and new with the help of the Spirit. Help us to act on what we hear with faith alive and active, and to live our lives together, ready to find new understandings of your word and new ways to share your love and grace. Keep us living in faith and fellowship together, praying and working together, living and laughing together, sharing and growing together. People of the Gospel. Amen. We have worshipped as a family, together and apart. May the blessing of God, source, guide and goal, be with you this week and always. Amen. Amen.